for joining us at this time. This is News Analysis coming to you on Politics and Business TV, the top stories. Dangote Patrol, marketers wait as delivery date extended again. Hunger protests, police begin trial of 1,135 detained demonstrators. <coughs> Local government autonomy, PDP, APC clash over Supreme Court judgment. Details coming up shortly. Welcome back. I am Idris Amina. Let's begin with oil matters today where there seem to be strong indications that the Dangote Petroleum Refinery may not roll out petrol today in line with its earlier schedule. The president Dangote group Ali Alhaji Ali Kodangote had last month projected that the refinery would begin the production of petrol between August 10th and 12th, 2024. Findings revealed that the 650,000 barrels per day capacity refinery might not roll out petrol today. But multiple officials close to the development confirmed on Sunday that all was set for the refinery to begin the production of the much-awaited premium motor spirit before the end of August. However, further findings show that the ongoing crude supply crisis might be a setback to the Dangote oil refinery, which is supposed to commence the supply of the much awaited premium motor spirits, popularly called petrol, into the market today. This is also as PMS marketers await the sale of the commodity by the refinery this week. Reliable sources preview to the development revealed that the refinery is ready to release petrol this month, regardless of the crude crisis. Meanwhile, petrol. Petroleum marketers in Nigeria say they are still waiting to hear from the refinery on when it will begin the release of petrol. Both major and independent marketers showed interest in buying PMS from Dangote, especially after years of depending on the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited for petrol. Nigeria is still battling with the aftermath of the protests as several state police commands in the northern part of the country have begun the prosecution of arrested protesters during the 10 day during the 10 day and bad governance in Nigeria nationwide protests. While the protests were relatively peaceful in the south, it turned violent in the north with several lives lost property worth billions of naira destroyed, leading to the declaration of curfew in no fewer than five states. The protest which held from August 1st to 10th was against the rising cost of living, which has been fueled by four subsidy removal, surging inflation at a 28-year high, and government economic policies that pushed the naira to a record low against the dollar. At least 17 persons were reportedly killed in Abuja, Kano, Niger, Bonu, Kaduna and Jigawa and several others injured on the opening day of the protest with Amnesty International condemning the use of deadly action against the protesters and accusing the security operatives of killing at least 21 protesters. Police arrested protesters, some of whom waved the Russian flag in Kano, Kaduna, Gombe, Katsina, Yobe, Bauchi, Bonu and Jigawa as the demonstration assumed a violent dimension, announcing that they would be duly prosecuted. Findings showed that at least 1,135 arrested persons during the protest will be charged to court beginning from today. Now let's head on to politics where the People's Democratic Party and the ruling All Progressive Congress on Sunday traded words over the recent Supreme Court judgment granting autonomy to local government. While the opposition PDP described the apex court judgment as a potential source of trouble, the ruling APC called the opposition party an enemy of the people who did not want the dividends of democracy to percolate to the grassroots. A month after Supreme Court judgments, the PDP National Publicity Secretary, Debo 
Ologun Agba addressed a World Press Conference in Abuja on Sunday, stating that the matter was not yet settled. On July 11th, the Supreme Court ruled that the 36 state governors can no longer control funds meant for the 774 local government areas in Nigeria. The judgment delivered by Justice Emmanuel Akim affirmed that the local governments must manage the fund, their own funds, reinforcing their financial independence. The court also declared that state governments lack the authority to appoint caretaker committees for councils recognizing only democratically elected local governments. Oyo State Governor Sheyi Makinde, who is the vice chairman of the Nigeria Governors Forum, had warned that the public would bear the consequences of the judgments. Also on politics matters, the Nigeria Labour Congress NLC yesterday asked President Bola Tinubu's administration to stop the blame game, reverse its policies that have caused hardship to Nigerians and engage in meaningful dialogue with relevant stakeholders. Similarly, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party in the 2023 poll, Mr. Peter Obi, said the nationwide protests, which ended on Saturday, were a call on Nigeria's leaders to reflect deeply on the growing poverty in the country and take steps to address it. Former National Vice Chairman Northwest of the Ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, Salihu Lukman, spoke in the same vein describing the nationwide protests against hunger and bad governance as sufficient grounds for impeachment of the president and some state governors. The NLC also alleged that since President Tumbu took over the reins of power, he had engaged in harassment and intimidation of labor leaders, adding that the recent invasion of its headquarters was to provoke the labor movement. This, among others, were contained in a communique issued at the end of the emergency National Executive Council meeting of the NLC held during the week. In the communique by NLC President Mr. Joe Ajero, NEC reaffirmed the Congress commitment to defending the rights and welfare of the Nigerian workers, saying it would not hesitate to take all necessary actions to ensure their safety and well-being. We are watching news analysis on politics and business television. Still to come, Nigeria's at Paris 2024 Olympics. Details of this and more after the break. Welcome back. At the just concluded Paris 2024 Olympics, several athletes of Nigerian descent made significant contributions while representing other nations. These athletes, although born or connected to Nigeria, chose to compete under the flags of countries such as Germany, Bahrain, the United States, France, Great Britain, and Spain. Their performances not only earned them individual glory, but also highlighted the diverse and global nature of talent originating from Nigeria. From winning gold in short boots to securing silver in the 400 meter and high mat throw. And men's football, these at least demonstrated exceptional skill and determination on the world stage, continuing the legacy of Nigerian excellence in international sports. Meanwhile, Nigeria's continent left the tournament without securing a single medal, marking it one of the country's most disappointing Olympic outings in recent times. Despite having a strong roster of athletes, the closest Nigeria comes to winning athletes was in athletics, where a few athletes made it to the finals but failed to finish on the podium. This result contrasts sharply with Nigeria's best Olympic performance, which occurred at the Alania 1996 Games, where the nation won six medals, including gold in men's football and women's long jump. On the other hand, the 2024 outing could be considered among Nigeria's worst, paralleling the 2012 London Olympics, where the country also failed to win any medals underscoring the ongoing challenges in Nigeria's sports development and international competition performance. 
the Paris 2024 Olympics concluded on August 11, 2024, with the United States leading the medal table with 126 medals, 40 gold, 40 silver, and 42 bronze. China followed closely with 91 medals, and Japan rounded out the top three with 45 medals. Notably, the host nation, France, finished fifth with 64 medals. Other standout nations included Australia, Great Britain, and the Netherlands, all of which placed in the top 10. Sports Development Minister Senator John Owen Eno said that President Bola Tinubu approved over 12 billion naira for Team Nigeria's preparation and participation at the forthcoming 2024 Paris Olympics and Paralympics in Paris, France. And now, former Vice, Pres from former Vice Chancellor of the Ocean State University, Professor Labode Popola, and Dean Faculty of Renewable Natural Resources, University of Ibadan, Professor Adejoke Akinyele, yesterday tagged the federal government to eliminate middlemen in the food and agricultural supply value chain to boost food production in the country. Professor Popola and Akinyele made the call during the 40th year anniversary and reunion of the class of 1984 graduates of the Faculty of Agriculture and For Forestry, University of Ibadan. In his remarks, Adejoke said, if we can remove the middlemen from the food production chain, it is going to go a long way in ensuring food security in Nigeria. And Popola, who is, who is the Executive Secretary and Chief Executive Officer, African Forest Forum, Nairobi, Kenya, in his view, stressed that with good climate and fertile arable Arab land, Nigeria must have food security, stating that if Nigeria wants to be involved in agriculture, it must have people who are committed to it. There must be passion and patience for it. Still, you are watching news analysis live on politics and business television. Happy International Youth Day to all the youth out there. To mark today's occasion, we will be discussing youth investment in the 21st century. Join us after the break. Digitalization is transforming our world, offering unprecedented opportunities to accelerate sustainable development. Digital technologies such as mobile devices, services and artificial intelligence are instrumental in advancing the sustainable development goals. Data generated from digital interactions supports evidence-based decision-making with profound impact across economic, social and environmental dimensions. Digital technologies and data contribute to at least 70% of the 169 SDG targets while potentially reducing the cost of achieving these goals by up to 55 trillion USD. Young people are leading the charge in digital adoption and innovation with three quarters of those aged 15 to 24 using the internet in 2022, a rate higher than other age groups. However, disparities persist, particularly in low-income countries and among young women who often have less access to the internet and digital skills compared to their male counterparts. While there is an urgent need to enhance digital inclusion, youths are largely recognized as digital natives using technology to drive change and create solutions. As the 2030 deadline for the SDGs approaches, the role of young people in digital innovation is essential for addressing global issues. By celebrating the digital contributions of youth, we can inspire further innovation and collaboration towards achieving sustainable development. Today is International Youth Day and we will be analysing youth investment in 21st century. Good afternoon, Mr. Abraham Abba. Good afternoon. So on today's occasion, International Youth Day, what is the significance of this year's theme? Well, looking at the 
the team i think um, is a challenge or they are calling on the youth especially that um, they should look at a lot of things because now we're going digital the whole world is going digital and if you look at them um, from your news you see that the youth are taking over the digital world but we're calling on the leaders because the youth cannot do it alone having all the challenges the youth are facing in today's uh, economy nothing seems to happen especially in the african setting and nigeria in general so we are looking at um, uh, a lot of things need to be done for the youth especially in nigeria so um like uh, if you look at just recently looking at what happened at the protests this is one thing that will prove to you that the youths are not carried along even uh even when mr president said he has given the youth uh, a significant role in his governance we can bet you that there's still room for so many things to be done for the youth and that's why we're calling on nigerian president to look closely that what the nigerian youth need at the moment is to be carried along um in, it's in the it, government it, yes like we're talking about their educational the uh, tango is bringing the issue of uh, loans for the nigerian youth which is a very good uh, omen for him and then we're looking at a lot of youths especially in the rural areas if you go there you see massive youths that are left unattended to and that's why we the the youth advocates or the convenience of the youth we want to call especially in nigeria that the youths need to be taken care of the youth have a lot in their domain that need to be used at this moment because everything is going digital which everybody knows and the world is recognizing that so i think nigeria don't need to be carried our, our back we need to do the necessary things now so you made mention of the um um, youth loan or the federal government loan mm. how is that helping the youth in the government because this um this year's theme now is digitalization right yeah okay we are crying for the youth to give us more voice in mm. the government mm. let the government give mm. us more room to participate mm. in fixing mm. nigeria mm. so how is the government offering us this loan related to this yes if you look at the loan the loan is coming at a very good time because if um, the, the, the challenges the youth are having is mostly in their education. And if you give a, a youth the loan to study with a very good leverage, I think it's like telling the youth, okay, come, we want to make you part of this governance. Like most of the uh, developed countries, this is what happened in the United States. This is what happened in the UK and the rest of the developed countries. So we, we are advocating for more of this. Let it not just be on the paper. Let it not just be like, okay, you call for a tea party where few youths come around and you, 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 you make this thing happen. We know a lot of things happen when they bring the youths to the to the tv and that is the end of the things we heard so we are calling on nigerian government especially this moment mr president come with a team renewed hope if truly what he's telling nigerian is true the first people that need to be carried along in this moment at this time is the youth so what is your assurance that after this education the mm. Um, loan yeah when we get this loan we go to school when we're done with the school how assured are you that we are going to be involved they are going to give us the room to be involved in the government considering the fact that so many of us are on the streets without jobs so many of us are graduates no jobs 
no room for to participate in government. So how is this loan? I'm coming back to the loan again. How is this still helping? Yes, if you look at the loan, what what happened on the loan is that first of all, if you're given the loan, you're, they are not asked to pay immediately. You're going to pay it when you get employed or when you are self-employed. But we, we are uh, in our uh, program, the World Youth Coalition Against Corruption, what we advocate for is the youth should do more of the blue collar job. There's no room, there's no even place in the governance all over the world. The world, the countries that develop today, like China, uh, uh, most of the countries that you find people having more of the youth in government, it's not, it's not like you bring them to the Astro Rock to come and work. No. What we're saying is the, the Mr. President blo uh, brought a very good uh, a ministry now, and he targeted the blue economy, telling the youth that, look, you must not be in the governance but you will involve yourself in governance. Like we in our, our forum, the World Youth Coalition Against Corruption, we tell you that for you to talk to Mr. President, for you to challenge Mr. President, you have to be on your own. You have to be the master of your own business. You should be able to bring up something. We have a lot of rooms a lot of things happening. There are a lot of creativities. The youth have it all. But what we need is a little leverage for the youth. The moment you get them this leverage, the moment you give them this little push, it's just a little push. The youth are very attentive to a lot of things. They have ideas, they are full of ideas, but what we need for the youth is just a push. So how how sure are we that we'll get this push from yes looking our at um, looking at looking 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 at this looking at what happened recently on just a, a week protest that happened now it has sent a message I believe that it sent a very good message to the leadership of Nigeria looking at what is happening in the other countries like Bangladesh just look at what happened the youth said we are not ready. We are not ready for what the shenanigans, all the, 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 the people you brought for us. We want our own prime minister. We want our own person. And the, 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 the country said, okay, let's give you what you want. Look at what happened in, in Kenya. It's a, it's a very good thing to know that, look, the youth have waking up. I want to assure you that going by what happened in Nigeria last week, the government knows that it's just like a cake huh it's just like the moment you get this that is the end but we don't want it to get to that point that's why we are saying that if you said you're going to do this for the youth please make sure you get people who are ready people who knows about it people who can give the nigerian youth what they believe the mr president will say it but who are the people advocating this who are the people making this happen for the youth most at times you'll be sorry when this thing gets down just look at what happened at the olympic you see the the shameful thing that happened with all the money everything was siphoned and most of the youths that were taken to that place they were they had a lot of issues these are youths that went to the to the olympic but what happened at the end of the day, there was a lot of challenges. And that's why we're calling on Mr. President. You have to put people that you put the round, they said you need a round peg at the right, uh, what do you call that? So we need people with a lot of difference. So, Talking about the youth and the Olympics, we see mm. so many Nigerians that play for other countries and they won this medal. Very well, very well. So if the, if the country was favorable for the youth, mm. why would they leave the country in the first place? Yes, you know, when if, they talk if, about... If the country is a country that gives room to, for, for the youth to explore and, and be there and be who they mm. are, why mm. would they even leave the country? No, you see, the, the issue here is that when we talk about the Japa syndrome that you see all over the country, it's not like people don't go for migration. 
You can go for education, migration, even the religion said you can go and look for education. Like the, the, the Islamic religion said that you can go all over the world to get education. And so the Christianity said you can travel as far as you can go. So the religion itself speak about getting education, getting learning. When you live where you are, the place of your harbor, like okay, where I was born and brought up in Zaria, I had to live there because I need a better life. life. And here I am here. So what we're saying is we need to grow as you move, as you get more, you meet a lot of people, you meet a lot of ideas. So these are the things we're talking about. So when you talk about, okay, what happened? Why are the youth going out of the country? Yes, most of them are going for education. The Chinese government do the same thing. In the past centuries, you see people go out of China to go and get education. And they still come back to their country. And that's why I see China is becoming the world uh, economic best. Because they sent their youth out there. Go to, to go everywhere you think you can get this. Go and source it. Come back home and let's make it happen. So we want so, to call on Mr. President that forget about this language. People must go out of this country. The youth will go out. That is for sure. But what we say is encourage them that when you go out there, go and source the knowledge, come back home and do something. So consider um, the former administration signed a bill mm. that's the Harris administration, yes, yes. the not too young to bill. Yes. So when will it take effect? Yes, it has taken effect. Because most of the guys you see today at the National Assembly... Guys? Yes, they are or guys. Men. They are not men. They are guys. I, will, I have a lot of them that are my, my, my schoolmates. They are in the National Assembly. Do you know how they got there? They got there because the people in their constituency where they came from said, we are tired of these old men. We want people that will give us a new leverage. And when you go there, when you see them, we have the, the, the we don't want to call them on this, on this, on this place here. We don't want to call those people that are youth at heart, that want to change even the narrative. They, they start going about the country, meeting the elder statesmen to tell them, okay, looking at the constitution, it's not working for the Nigerian people. It's not working for the Nigerian young people. We need our own constitution. The youth are bringing it up. So when you said, even in the state assembly, when you go to your state now, where you come from in Kogi, you see people who are youth at the national assembly. When you go to Kano, I think the, 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 the lady, one of the ladies that got uh, uh, voted in, she was just, I think she was 25 years old. So what we're saying is, the youths are already taking over gradually. So little by little, is the youths are, yes, getting, are involved getting involved in the involved. development yes, of the country. Very well. mm. All right, so considering the intervention for youth empowerment, how um, do you think it has yielded any results? Yes, the intervention right now, looking at um, a lot of things were not done well like the humanitarian uh, uh, ministry where they said okay this most of this thing that are coming to this ministry should go especially to the youth to those who are vulnerable but what we find out is there's a lot of embezzlement thank god that okay mr president came in and he want to change the narrative that's why now we are so happy that the ministry of youth it was youth sport but now he brought in the ministry of youth and we have like the lady there who is musawa and the young guy the the the, the young guy Ogunle or somebody they are all in their mid 30s so these are the, these are kind of the things we are calling on mr president that when you bring people with knowledge like the the the, the young man in the uh, uh, digital economy is a young guy boson is a young man and we have a lot of them and uh, just like the the lady in the uh, humanitarian uh, ministry if not that she got involved in that kind of uh, dastly art it would have been like a very good thing for nigerian youth but we are not still we are still saying that despite the fact 
uh, we still have some wrong attitude, some some funny attitude with the youth. We still have some some other ones that are are looking forward, just like you here. You're doing very well. Thank you. Yes. And a lot of young people here. So I want to assure you that the youth, despite the fact that they call the youth with a lot of names, not every youth that has bad attitude. And that you are representing one of those wonderful youths. So aside this loan, how yeah. has the government really empowered youths? Yes. Um, what we have today is not really, we're still going, we're still, we're still crawling. But just like Martin Luther King would say in one of his quotes, he said, if you know you cannot run, walk. If you know you cannot walk, he said, crawl. Oh. So what we're saying is, we are crawling now. We will start walking. And gradually we will start running. So we want to tell every Nigerian youth that we are advocating for good governance, yes. We want things to change, but it, room has never been built in a day. So we, we work, want to call on the youth because we, we are more of the peace advocates for the youth. That, okay, your voice has been heard. You have spoken well. You have sent the message to the elders that, look, oh, we, are no more, we are no more going to sit down like the, 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 the Nigerian agent that say, we no not go sit down, look. I hope you get that. So the Nigerian youth have already spoken. So even if the government, they, they, they've not done anything, yes. the Nigerian youth are ready to stand up for their of rights. Course, they are ready to be course. involved in the of government. Course, of they course. are ready for new Nigeria. Very well, very so well. your, um, your NGO or mm. your agency, yes. World Youth Coalition Against Corruption, very well. how, has you, how has it helped in bringing youth to limelight? Like what we advocate in our NGO, looking at the name, is a coalition, is a world body where we talk to the youth consciousness we tell the youth you must not do the faulty things we see like most of them go into yahoo yahoo they go into ritualists they go that is not how you make money you get it we want to tell the youth that there are there are very good ways to make money there are many good ways to make cool money you must not put yourself into a very wrong uh, situation that it will jeopardize with your life and the life of your parents and those who are around you and that is what we are advocating at our uh, ngo we mm -hmm. want we keep calling on the youth we tell the youth there are a lot of things because looking at okay most of the people you see today in governance if we go, uh, uh, if we go uh, another, let's say, 60 years down, down the line, memory, memory lane, look at people like uh, uh, even the present uh, president. When he was, when he was a minister, when he was a, a senator, he was a young man. Looking at uh, uh, Gawan, when Gawan became a president, he was just 33 years. And a lot of them. Is it the, the, the Sardona? Is it the Tafa Balewa? They all came in as young guys. So what we're saying is the youth can make it, but not making it wrongly. You don't have to do, you don't have to cheat people. You don't have to do uh, all those Yahoo things before you make money. No. And that is what our NGO is advocating. And we are collaborating with the EFCC, the ICPC, that, look, the best thing to do is not to put these guys behind bars. Okay. It's not, how, it's not <clears throat> to put them behind bars. Get this information from them. How do you get this? How, do you, how are you able to track somebody's account? Now, make use of them. Don't keep them there. That is what we are asking the, 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 the anti-graft agencies to do. So, okay, considering the, the, this year's team draws more on digitalization, Digital, yes, yes. why this? Yes, if you look at the whole world is going digital. Okay. The whole world is going digital. Yesterday I was watching, uh, 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 they, they were giving a, 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 very, a very short uh, biography of uh, Elon Musk. And when you look at everything that guy came up with, is all about youth. Is it the electric motor? Is it the, the renewable energy thing? 
is it the 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 the, the, the max uh, that is the uh, going to the max to go and stay that is a huge man thinking and when you we have the 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 the, 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 the this guy that brought in the the words of yeah uh, you see these are young people so what we're saying is this message for this year for the youth uh, going digital you cannot be using you see a lot of people use android and they don't even know what it means you see a lot of youth go in there and they watch all sorts of funny funny films when you're supposed to do, to be a creator when you're supposed to send message when you're supposed to do a lot of things as a youth and some people are just there watching movies. You can sit down and watch movies for like five hours. And you cannot sit down and say, what can I make out of this phone I'm using? You see people buy phones with a lot of money. And they cannot get out of it, anything out of it. So what we're calling on youth is, the message has been sent. Youth, go for digital. Go digital. Go digital. So what we're saying is, there's a lot of things out there it's just for you to think and do and act and act so finally what is your note to nigerian youth well um this we are calling on the youth today is a very wonderful day for the youth what we say is be the best you can be be the best youth you can be be a youth that will speak for tomorrow be a youth that your parent will be happy that they have you thank you very much thank you very much uh, mr ibrahim abba conveyor world youth coalition against corruption thank you for joining us on the program once again congratulations to nigeria youth and happy international youth day this will be the size of our program for today i am itris amina states bye for now <laughs>